Okay, so we're moving from Asia to Africa. So I am going to talk about Tanzania. That's where I'm coming from. Um, Tanzania is in East Africa. Um, like when you say East Africa, they're like, how many countries? <laughs> there is Tanzania, there is Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi. So yeah, so I have my fellow East Africans here, like Patrick, <laughs> Didier as well. Yeah, um, so when you say Tanz Tanzania is a like united country, it's a combination of two countries, like the Tanzania mainland and Tanzania island, that is Zanzibar. So when you talk about Tanzania, you have to be <laughs> more specific. Yeah, so first of all, the flag, it has four colors, as you can see there in the screen. Um, the green is the natural vegetation, like most of the parts of the country is filled with green pasture and everything. Um, yellow is the mineral resources, like we have a lot of um, minerals in the country, like gold, diamond, tanzanite. Uh, the black is the people that live there black people obviously and um, blue is the Indian Ocean uh, because the country um, is bordered with the Indian Ocean and other water bodies like the rivers lakes and everything else um, well the capital city is the Doma but it used to be Dar es Salaam before that's where I'm coming from like here at the coastal part but then they moved it to the Doma like a little bit in the center for security purpose and other reasons that it's more historical <laughs> i can say um so it's a pretty big country yeah compared to other countries in east africa it has like 945 um thousand kilometers squared and the population is 56.32 million and the currency is tanzanian shillings Oh, we call it two shillings. Okay, um, so, well, the country has more than 100 tribes, like all over the country, like there are different tribes with different cultures, uh, different language, different traditions. Yeah, so you can imagine how many languages are there. So, but the most um, common or iconic, I can say like the most famous, um, tribe is the Maasai, Maasai tribe. Um, they're regarded as the warrior tribe, yeah, because they move around with the spears and everything. Um, people refer them for security purposes in their homes and everything else, yeah. But the, um, and they're also known to keep on, um, like embrace their culture, like they wear the traditional wear, like in their daily life, like they move around in the city with the traditional gowns and everything. So it's one of the tribes that they still embrace their culture, I can say. Yeah, so, um, but the main language uh, we speak is Swahili. Um, Swahili is spoken in all over East Africa and some other parts of Africa, you can say, yeah. But mostly I can say it originated here in Tanzania. Yeah, but we also speak English, um, like, because it's a Commonwealth country, so, most of the um, businesses are done in English, uh, most of the laws, regulations, like if you go to the bank, uh, everything else is done in English. At work, we work in English. So we can say like um, English is more like a um, business operating language, but Swahili is what we use at home and daily conversation. Yeah. Okay, so Swahili language, okay, so I, I wrote a little bit about it. Um, it's like 35% of the Swahili language is originated from Arabic. Yeah, like there are kind of some words are kind of similar to Arabic language, like um, marhaba and yeah, some words. And also um, the uh, Swahili adapts some of the English words, like you can see like uh, police, it's police and everything, radio, radio. Yeah, and also like, I'm pretty sure like most of you have seen uh, The Lion King. Yeah, so you're pretty um, familiar with the phrase Hakuna Matata. So that is, uh, it means no worries is what they say in the movie. So that is a Swahili word. 
and some of the like most of the characters were given Swahili names like Simba it means lion so it was pretty much it based on the national park from Tanzania or you can say Kenya Patrick either way <laughs> Yeah, so, and also uh, you can say Swahili is one of the easiest African language to learn, like, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, like, straightforward, like, you don't need, like, different pronunciation of words, like, it's just like English, the way you read the words, like, the way they're written is how you pronounce them, yeah, so, um, okay, so what do we wear? Um, I can say, as I said, uh, Tanzania is a combination of two countries. Tanzania mainland and island. So for Tanzania island, that is Zanzibar, um, it's mostly like 99% of it are Muslims. So they pretty much cover up a lot. Like they wear the abaya and everything else. Yeah, but for Tanzania mainland, um, that's where I'm coming from. Like people wear pretty much anything. But if you feel like you try to, you know, channel your inner Tanzanian tradition, whatever. <laughs> you can wear um, the African prints. Yeah, like these fabric, like colored, beautiful fabrics. And then you design whatever you want to wear, like a dress or anything else. Yeah, so it depends what part of Tanzania you live. Yeah, so that's how it will de determine what you will wear. Okay, <laughs> sorry for the ones who are fasting, but the most important part. <laughs> okay, so, um, the Tanzanian cuisine, I can say um, most of our food is spicy. Yeah, because um, Zanzibar, the Tanzanian island, is also known as a spice island. Like, there's so many spices over there. So, our food is not boring. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just don't put salt and pepper, then you're done. No, it has, it needs to have extra, like um, garlic, cloves, cinnamon, and, yeah, and so forth. But the most um, common or yeah famous dish from Tanzania is something called ugali. It's made it's made of um, maize porridge, and you eat it with whatever like mostly like beans, chicken, yeah. And then we have biryani. I think I think most of our food is kind of similar to Arabic or Indian cuisine. Yeah, it's kind of similar, like the biryani and all the spicy rice and everything else. Yeah, but we have um, like a street food. It's famous. It's called chips in my eye. It's like fried uh, French fries. You fry it with eggs. It's like, yeah, it's mostly eaten by, you know, young generation and everything. Yeah, it's like the one like in the bottom right, second picture. Yeah, so that's chips in my eye. Yeah, but we eat in anything else like plantain and yeah. And also like because we live um, um, the coastal part of the Indian Ocean, so we have a lot of fish. So most of the dish like involve fish and yeah, so every kind of dish <laughs> can say. Um, so Zanzibar, the Tanzanian island is known with a most beautiful beaches i can say like the water is so clean you can see like it's pretty much clear yeah there are a lot of beaches there like it's a tourist attraction most people are coming to zanzibar um there is um a place called uh prison island where there are giant turtles like people go there to feed them taking pictures and everything as you can see in the picture there like the turtles is so big like like I, you know, <laughs> I don't know the height exactly. Yeah, so, but it's found in Zanzibar. Um, there is a stone town, it's an old town. Like it's filled with old buildings and everything. Um, and also like another place um, where people can go uh, for snorkeling and swimming with the dolphins. Yeah, so it's pretty much an interesting place to go. Yeah, a lot of beaches to go for vacation and everything. Okay. Um, Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, this is the highest mountain in Africa, but it's the um, tallest, highest freestanding mountain in the world. Yeah, so that is a fact. And also, like, so if you stand in one of the peaks of the mountain, you're in the Africa's highest point, you can say. So it's one of our treasure, you can say. Yeah, even though with the global warming and everything, like the 
um, the ice on top is kind of melting, but it's very much great. Still, hopefully, like things are going to be better, I can say. Yeah, so, okay, we have another place. We have Lake Tanganyika. This is the world's longest freshwater lake. Yeah, it has a lot of varieties of fish around. People can go for kayaking and everything. Yeah, it's the water is clear and clean. Yeah, so it's pretty much a great place, I can say. Okay, so when you say Tanzania, or when people say Africa, most of them like refer to safaris and everything. Yeah, so Tanzania has almost like 38% of game reserves, national parks and everything. So imagine that eight percent of a country is filled with wild animals. Yeah, so that is Tanzania. Like we have a lot of any wild animal that you can think of can be found here. <laughs> okay, almost not all. Yeah, so okay, uh, I think I went fast. Okay, so one of the most famous um, national park is the Serengeti. Yeah, maybe for some of you have heard of it. Um, it's the home of the big five animals. Uh, big five animals, um, this is a term that was given for uh, poachers, that the animals that were so hard to hunt, uh, the elephant, the lion, the leopard, rhino, buffalo. Yeah, so the home of the big five, this is where you can find them, uh, zebras and giraffes and everything. But the most common like fact about the Serengeti National Park is the annual migration, whereby um, it's every year okay so that's the meaning of annual like um the wildebeest and zebras gazelles like they move from one part of the um of the park to the like from north to south or south to north moving around all the way to kenya like in search of water and um and food so they move in a large very large group like, yeah, so in, in the movement, like most of them like die because of hunger or were killed by the predators and everything. So it's considered in one of the, it was considered as one of the natural wonder of the world. Like most people like tourists um, go during these times to experience how they move around and everything. So it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it has, um, the Serengeti has more than 500 species of birds, 300 species of mammals, and of which 80% are large mammals. So you can imagine how many animals are there. Okay, so we have Ngorongoro Conservation Area. So this is also a, like, it was formed um, by vo volcanic eruption. So a crater was formed. And in the crater, that's where the animals can be found, can be seen. So the, it's considered as a place of global importance because all the endangered species are found there. Like all the elephants who are like hunted and everything, yeah, can be found there, you can say. Yeah, but it's considered as the, um, uh, it's the largest unflooded and unbroken caldera in the world. Like all the rain, all the water can never be flooded. So it's still, Standing to today for over a million, half a million years. Yeah, so okay, another park is Zaidani. This is an interesting park because it's found um, along the beach. So you can see like lions moving around the beach, like elephants and everything. Yeah, so imagine just chilling at the beach and then a lion passes by. So it's one of the interesting parks to go. Yeah. Um, okay, um, there is Gombe, oh sorry, there is Gombe National Park. Um, I'm not sure, like some of you have heard about uh, Jane Goodall. Um, she's a famous primatologist who was um, learning about the behavior of the chippazis, like in comparison with the human behavior. So she did her research um, in Gombe National Park in Tanzania and it's one of the world's most study group of uh, chimpanzees like still ongoing research because every now and then like new species are found and yeah so it's an interesting place to go there and see how these um chimpanzees behave how some of them like they are trained they act like human beings yeah so it's an interesting place to go 
Okay, um, so another interesting place to visit um, is a tourist, it's known as Dubai Gorge. Um, in this place, um, it's known as the oldest evidence of mankind's evolution. Like the Zinjanthropus was found here, like the, there is an evidence that humankind, like the first human was found in Africa. So, I don't know, it can be debated, but according to the history, yeah. So they say like the skull of the Zinjanthropus was found here. So it's placed in the museum, people can go and see. And yeah, so it's an interesting place to visit and see all the historical evolution of humankind. Um, so, as I said, like in the flag, like every color like has a meaning and all the things that we have and yellow meant minerals that we have in the country. Yeah, so we have a lot, as I said, and some of the gemstones that we have, we have Tanzanite. Yeah, as the name Tanzanite, it means it's coming from Tanzania, only in Tanzania, and it's one of the most beautiful gems yeah, that people, even though it can be found in other parts of the world, but it's originated from Tanzania. Okay, so we have gold, we have ruby, emerald, sapphire, diamond, garnet, yeah, so a lot of them can be found there. Okay, so another interesting place people love to go and visit or hear about is Lake Natron. Um, this is a kind of creepy place, I can say. <laughs> like, um, they say it's the most caustic or corrosive body of water. Like, it has high pH, like around 10.5, yeah, because it's not water, it has like 7, neutral, yeah, so it has higher pH in such a way that um, animals that cross over there, they tend to be turned into stone. It's a belief, I don't know if it's true, but there's a photographer who took some pictures, it's the one you can see to prove that that's the fact, but there are some species of flamingos who are who are who have adapted and they live there actually. So it's like there are few species of like animals who can survive there. But if you're not, you know, if 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 the animal is not like from there or anything, it passes by yeah, it can be killed because of the high temperature and high pH and everything else. Okay, so, and the last one is Odo Inyulengai. Um, this is the, you can say, it's the only active volcano known to erupt carbonated lava. So they say like, um, the lava that is, uh, is erupted in this place is that it's too, I mean, sorry, the lava that is um, erupted is black. Like it's compared like the other volcano, like you can expect to see like it's red and everything, but here it's black. And then um, the fact is that it's so cold that sometimes it freezes in there, as you can see like in the picture in the bottom left. And that it, it can shatter into pieces that blow away in the wind and its temperature is low enough that someone once fell into the lava and survived. So like, it's kind of like <laughs> interesting fact, imagine, yeah, the temperature of that. Yeah, so I tried to put some few facts about Tanzania and I hope you have grasped a little bit of it. Um, I didn't put about the Tanzanian people. Uh, so all I can say is that they are friendly and they're like, they, it's different from other places. Like if you just walk to somebody and start talking to that person, they feel like you're invading, you know, their personal space. But for, for, for Tanzanian people, like people love that. You just find somebody that you don't know and then you start talking to them and then, yeah. So they're friendly and they, yeah. So they're friendly. It's a peaceful place to be. And the weather is kind of hot. It can be 28, 30, maximum can say 34 degrees. Yeah, but yeah, but the best place to visit is June, July, I can say, or it depends where you're going. So yeah, each place has its own best time to visit. So thank you, Asante.
Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, actually, I was wondering about the face painting because the motifs seem so different sometimes. I mean, is that does that have any meaning, or just people can just uh, paint whatever they want on their face? Um, the face painting is different for each tribe. So each tribe they have their own like tradition and their own meaning. Yeah. So that painting was from a tribe called Makonde. So they have their own like meanings, I can say. So each tribe can have like different paintings or piercing, I can say, uh, yeah, so it depends. So um, people are thought to, uh, about the painting from the childhood like that? Sorry? So people learn about the face painting, I mean, each tribe members learn about the face painting from the childhood. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, um, okay, so it's mostly done like in the, I can say, villages part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you cannot find somebody like doing that in the city. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like um, their parents and the generation before them, so they kind of like teach each other like how to do it. So, you know, so you learn from, you know, since you're young and then you pass it to your next generation, I can say. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, oh, it was wonderful. I want to um, have a curiosity. Um, have you been to any of those parks like the Serengeti or, or the other ones? Um, I have been to one that I didn't put there. It's called Mikumi. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it can be crazy that I'm talking about places that I've never been to, but I have been to Mikumi. National Park, but I did not put it here, and I've been to Zanzibar, so yeah. Can you just go, or is there like, do you have to have specific, like, special permission to enter the parks? Or? Um, they're like fees you have to pay, and so it's for for Tanzanians, it's cheap, you know. So because yeah, you're from there, but for um, people from outside of Tanzania, it's okay. It's not expensive, but you pay more than the citizen from Tanzania. So there are fees that you're supposed to pay before you get into the park. I think there are some questions in the chat. Oh yeah. Um, the food is really similar to Bangladeshi cuisine. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, as I said, I, I feel like um, the food is kind of similar to most of the Asian countries. Yeah, because of the spices and everything. Yeah, so it's kind of similar. Uh, beautiful mountain. Yeah, beautiful it is. Um, not the best thing to watch delicious food while fasting. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. Um, which gem is the most expensive? Is the Tanzanite more expensive than gold? Is it sold as luxury item or tourist merchandise? Um, Okay, I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a luxury item, I can say. Like um, the thing is, most of the things that we have, like we don't know how to make the best out of it. Like we kind of, I can say, like there are terrible policies and everything. So most of the things are kind of exploited. So you can feel like um, Tanzania can be sold so cheap in Tanzania, but when it's taken to outside of the country, it's kind of like luxury item very expensive so you can find that gold is more expensive in Tanzania but if you go to another country they try to make it yeah so yeah it depends but I think gold is more expensive um, okay is it dangerous to go in parks due to wild animals how can a person visit them safely so um, you're not supposed to go there alone so they're like game ranges, uh, park ranges, whatever. So they gu they guide you. Yeah, so they're kind of like trained so they know how to deal when the lion comes because you go there in a safari uh, track, which is like open. So there have been like videos where like a lion can climb into the car. So they know how to act when the situation comes yeah, and how to act around animals. Like if you see like a, like a elephant, they kind of like, you know, yeah, you, you're not supposed to honk or do whatever, or else, yeah, something can happen. 
Yeah, so how about the temperature? Yeah, uh, as I said, temperature is from, it depends what month, but we don't have like winter or summer, whatever. So it's always like 28, 30, 32. Yeah, so it depends if it's raining or not. <laughs> so yeah, you can say that. Have you seen any of those big five that you're talking about? Yeah, I have. Yeah, because like the Bikumi that I went to, yeah, I can say like they are found in almost all parks. So whatever park that you go, you can find like a lion passing by. Yeah, so it's like some of the roads. If you're moving to, I mean, if you're traveling to other region in Tanzania, so some of the roads like cross um, like along the national parks. So even like in your, in your car when you're moving, you know, like inside the park or whatever, you can see like animals just like sitting or laying down like besides the road and everything. So it's like you can see them like anywhere <laughs> that you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, how much we must spend the cost to go to that place? We um, go how much should you spend? I think it depends where you're going. Um, and um, I am not so sure I have to like research on this, but it depends where you're going. But the place is not that expensive. Yeah, so you can go there in a budget, you can live like in cheap places, but if you want to go to those luxury places, it can be expensive. Yeah. I actually have a question because I was talking to some of the um, SI people who are from, I think, other parts of Africa and they were saying like they have to fly through a certain country uh, to go outside of Africa basically or something like coming to Sweden mm -hmm. so like is it easy to get to Tanzania or do you have to fly through another country um no like you we have an international airport in Tanzania like it's found in the in Dar es Salaam that's where I'm, I'm from but if you want to go to the national parks you have to get to Dar es Salaam first that's where the international flight is and then from there you can get the domestic flights to the place that you want to go but there it's so easy to get there like with Emirates or Turkish Airlines whatever it, it, it takes you straight to Tanzania or maybe or they meant they meant that uh, if you want to come from Africa, usually the airlines they connect either to Amsterdam or to Dubai. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So that's yeah. They, they, okay. There is no like straight flight. So like if you what, what flight you're taking. So if you're going with Emirates, so it means you have to connect in Dubai and then from Dubai to Dar es Salaam. Um, if it's Qatar, in Doha, the, yeah, Turkish, Turkish, yeah, so there is no like straight flight, but yeah, so it's like kind of similar to even when you're going to other countries, I can say. Okay, but so there's a direct the, flight from was the, the like, to Nairobi to... What? What was like the, the plane ticket price from Sweden to there right before Corona times? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, return ticket. Um, it can be around from 7,000 crumbs, I can say. Wow. Okay, guys, let's, so go to, let's, go, let's go there. Like, should be less. Should be less. <laughs> it's not now. bad. That is not bad. I think it should I mean, be. I mean, even to Jakarta? 6,000 6, or 5,500. Yeah, yeah it's it, 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 it depends when you're booking your ticket, I can say. So, yeah, it depends. And it depends with the flight. So, yeah, from around 6,000, 7,000, yeah. No, you know no, what? No. I'm looking for a flight ticket to Jakarta in July, in the summer, in the peak times, and I could get like 5,000 for two ways. Oh, yeah. For round ticket. I mean, I mean, the distance between Sweden and Jakarta is compared to Sweden to Africa. Yeah. But then the price ticket is much more cheaper. Yeah. It depends on the economies of scale. How many people yeah. go to the car start at a particular yeah, time? That makes, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I can say it depends when you're booking your ticket, uh, what flight you're taking, and of yeah. course, the early obviously the cheaper you can get. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you don't want to know the price from here to Bolivia, man. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> That's classified information. I will tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can look there's up. a reason. There's a reason he's not flying that. <laughs> 
Okay, so somebody asked me like five days traveling to Zania. If I can spend five days traveling to Zania, which are the best places should I visit and activities should I do? Okay, so I can say first, you need to go to Zanzibar because of the beautiful beaches, you know, like relax a little bit. And then after that, you can start with the national parks, you know, trip like Serengeti is a must. Gorongoro is the one that I mentioned. Um, there is, um, um, what else? You can go, if you're a hiking kind of person, you can climb a mountain. <laughs> yeah, you can go to any other kind of national parks. As I said, there are like more than 40 national parks. So that's pretty much what you can do in Tanzania. Go to a national park, to the beaches, and yeah, it's pretty much. But the question is super good because I imagine like I would need to like, um, sort of like I will need three days to go to Serengeti or like how, how much time does it require to go to this place exactly like, like the one you, you, you went like the, I guess it's a tour so the tour must, must take I don't know three days like yeah so um, sometimes you can decide to go as a group or like individually so sometimes like they're like group um, trips where you plan like what you want to do so it depends so some of the group like prefer to stay there like maybe for three days, five days, two days. So it depends what you want. Yeah, but the planning and everything. So it means, as I said, you have to get to Dar es Salaam first. It's a different uh, city. So it means you can go the same day. So it means you have to sleep there and then maybe go the next day. And then when you get there, you need to get a track and everything. So I can say three to five days you need like to see everything yeah great <laughs> and you might be tempted to extend the five days because it is really enjoyable yeah it is yeah it is it is great and, and also as i say it depends when you're going so if you go during the the annual migration you can see a lot of animals like moving together and yeah all the nature around you so it's pretty much great yeah. We're talking about Zanzibar. I just remember that um, now I'm doing a media law, a course, and I have to make a report about marketing law, about the influence marketing. And then the, the eyewear Zanzibar, it's a brand of eyewear. Um, Zanzibar is involved in the case. And the vision of Zanzibar is clear concept and vision. So I guess that is also derived from how the beach, the real beach of Zanzibar looks like. It's clear. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it is. Um, by the way, I have another question. I just want to. I was really curious about the price, about the living cost there. Um, can you just say how much is it for one meal compared to in Sweden? I mean, if you have like rice dish with meat there, and how much does that cost? Because in Sweden, it costs usually like hundred something crowns, like hundred nine or hundred ten. Crowns. Like in a restaurant? Yep. Okay, so it depends what restaurant, like in the like regular restaurant, I can say um, maybe one dollar, so cheap. Yeah, <laughs> it's like two thousand to design and shilling, so that's just like one US dollar. Oh my god. Yeah. I so think everyone is planning their trip. <laughs> I can really survive there. How many days should I stay? <laughs> How much does it cost? Yeah. Yeah, the like when, when I got here, like I was comparing like almost everything. Like if I go to the, to Ica, like I can say like I can buy like I don't know this in one dollar US dollars, and then here it's like ten US dollars. Then yeah, you can see here it's very expensive for me. Like things are pretty much cheap. Yeah. Wow. I think you re you really enjoy so much, especially if you co if you go from Sweden to to Tanzania with the SA money. <laughs> yeah, with the SA money, <laughs> with the SA money, with the SA money, you'll be a, you'll be a millionaire. You'll be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I hope you guys can come and visit, and yeah. No, and even and even Rehema, Rehema can can refer you to good places or even host you for some few days. I mean, here and there. Yeah, exactly, and then we can go and visit Patrick, <laughs> then go and visit Lydia. <laughs> yeah, because we are pretty much neighbors. So yeah, should we yeah. just plan this I trip there, to go there? 
after the corona as i trip as i trip <laughs> i mean it is so cheap that that the sai can sponsor this trip <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like we are exactly. going to gotaland but we want to go to yes it is still gotaland we are going yeah, to tanzania yeah. <laughs> the same budget for gotaland <laughs> tanzania <laughs> yeah so the next time you think about a vacation just think of tanzania and you already know some fewers of Swahili, so yeah hakuna <laughs> matata so that's me yeah that's my shit yeah yeah okay thank you good great so uh thank you everyone if anyone doesn't have any more questions <laughs> We'll have our next one uh, next Thursday. We'll have a few more uh, African countries to visit. Um, by the way, if you yeah. still, um, I mean, if there are any questions pop up after this um, Zoom meeting, you can just hit us up on our Facebook, but don't forget to follow and to like our Facebook fan page and also our Instagram page, <laughs> and FGL Stockholm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so from social media, let me just do some, <laughs> some exorcism. <laughs> what? <laughs> the exorcism. It, it worked really well, guys. I'm feeling better now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got rid of the bad spirit. <laughs> I was going to say, Patrick, we, we should try not to perpetuate the stereotype of Africa and just only show lions. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try not show lines on my from my side. I think I've covered all the lines. I know. I was, you presenting I was like, oh well. <laughs> there goes my. No, 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 no. The lines in Kenya are you can know them. You can know them. <laughs> what? What do you mean you can know them? But they're different. <laughs> Kenyan lines. The lion in the Lion King is from Kenya, so they look no. like that. I mean, they can speak. No. The lions in Kenya can speak. <laughs> They can speak. South Africa. <laughs> he went for a walk up, up. But as, as I say, like the animals like move around from Tanzania to Kenya, so they're like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Serengeti and Masai Mara are is so almost they, one. They have two citizenships, so. <laughs> 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 but not South Africa. By the way, we 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 we, we smuggle some lions to South Africa. Uh, our lines are very, very white lines. <laughs> yeah, so the ones that Ras will show, they they were from Kenya. <laughs> no, 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 don't come with the nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> they are all very beautiful lines. <laughs> You'll have to show the ostriches or something like that. Yeah, yeah. next, yeah, next, we next week, beautiful. next week, I will. There are quite a number of animals. Yeah, I mean, but also inclusive of those. Yes. But by the end of this, you will really feel like being in Africa. We must create an African Union and discuss which which animals you're gonna show. Sure. And <laughs> we are going <laughs> to have a small Zoom meeting to, to, to choose the animals to represent. I will be disappointed if you don't open with the theme from Lion King, okay? <laughs> I, 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 knew that. That. <laughs> I knew you were gonna talk about it. So. <laughs> 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 it's gonna be the opening of this Zoom, okay? <laughs> yeah, but it's really been great, yeah. It's been good. Yeah, it was Thank you so really much, guys, nice. for hosting this good meeting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to attending the next one. You are welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome. welcome so much. Well, yeah. Very, very welcome to join. Thank you, too. Yeah. Yeah, by the time we get to Bolivia, there will be no more animals to show. <laughs> <laughs> you know.